Okay, so let's uh, get started. Uh, we are very happy that we have uh, uh, Stefan Bianchini from CISA. Uh, CISA is uh, one of the cool so in institute of uh, advanced studies in Italy, the others in PISA. Uh, uh, let me speak to Chinese for well, the So I, you can say the first one. Yeah, yeah, and I, I will not say anything <laughs> which is bad and which is not true. <laughs> with a very easy equation, because it's a linear equation, which is a, is, is a balanced equation. In the sense that the directions of some vector field is equal to an edge. You can also write this in distribution, so in any weaker settings, but I think this is sufficient for many things. And it's very interesting, you can say something more than So the meaning of the equation is a distribution in the following. You have a region, which is the region here, and your arm inside is a <coughs> so the creation of the cancellation inside is bounded by that flow of the bound. So it's very easy to not be scary. But for the fact that uh, this is 
is a very weak differential relation. Simply because it's a thing that the form of the derivative, well, for example, considering the equation of the, the definition of the, the function, well, or homogeneity of function, so the derivative of a function is a measure. You get many properties, and for example, this very nice property. So the, if you take the set where the function is constant, <coughs> the derivative over there is zero. Now, if you take a smooth function, the set where it's constant is constant. On the other hand, what is the repetitive form is that uh, for uh, the divergence of the data, you can have that the set where the divergence is concentrated is exactly the set where the vector field is zero. So it means that uh, the divergence is a weak operator and uh, this is a non-local operator and uh, the function solution can be pretty rigorous. And so you see this example is due to a depth and it's the fact exactly that you have a, a kind of set here of a positive measure and the vector field has divergence zero outside actually it can be also plus uh, as close as the images as you want but uh, all the divergence is which means that once you take a trajectory of the vector field, you may decide to stay here for x. Because uh, essentially it tells you that uh, you have to stick the balance. So if you can throw, for example, the garbage in this uh, dump inside, just this kind of setting, and for you it's perfectly fine, even if all the relation are in the video, but as regular as you want. <coughs> OK, and now we arrive to conservation. In this case, the vector field has a particular form. So you have a form U, which is uh, essentially the form you are going to conserve, and the flow F. Then you write the derivative operator, and then you have the time derivative of U, now in the space time X, that's the divergence equal to zero if it's a conservation law, or something if it's a balance law. <coughs> Instead, if you, if you, instead of having a scalar form U, you have a vector form T. Okay, you can write a system, which is a balance of each of these quantities, which has its own flux F, and in order to be careful, you need to have that uh, flux F depends on all the other things. Okay, so and then you add the initial data, and the interpretation of the initial data is that, well, this is one of the, so the, Conservation falls here, so the flow of my quantity over here is equal to the flow over here. If the measure is if the source term is in. Okay, so we arrive to the definition of system conservation law, and uh, but keep in mind that since it is a divergence, it's a very weak thing. Not like the Laplace or something else. It's really a weak differential. Okay, so the first thing that you do in any Classically, you take the linear case and then start the linear case because it has to be transformed. And then, uh, so now the function, flux function, are some linear function, so they are some matrices times the vector u. And uh, <coughs> you take the real the, 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 the composition and then you obtain the equation for the coefficient. And it turns out that you don't want the equation to go up. Because uh, you see this is linear psi, so we have something which is uh, complex, plus i becomes what well, perfect. <coughs> this is a real equation, so it's complex complicated. Then you have an i, it becomes positive real. And since you have a psi, you have that uh, very small oscillation, they grow up very fast. So we require that the values are real for the psi, so sorry, that the system is diagonalized, but no, this is a mistake, it's diagonalized. And then you get the system is right. So essentially, the idea of this, the conservation law is because I have a divergence operator. The hyperbolicity is because I want to have that. In the linear case, I don't, I don't have any law. In the nonlinear case, it's that okay, you take the eigen values, and so to start with this matrix here, you want the eigen values of this one. Uh, sorry, this matrix is generalizable. The real so again, we have a, we arrive to 
why a system is called hyperbolic system of, of conservation, the conservation quality of the system and it is hyperbolic system. Okay, so why is it interesting? Well, okay, the paradigm that we find in many textbooks and this is the most known conservation law and still one of the most popular is that the order equation for the other dynamics where you have five balance law because of the conserve mass because of the metal becomes like three times the dimension or the dimension and then you conserve the energy. And uh, one of the natural problems with this data is the linear problem. So I assign the initial data which depends on the angle. And these are for the isentropic case, so this is what I think this is the, of the second component of the speed, that is the pressure. And what you see is that the solution is very complicated. So even if the problem, the initial data here was just uh, four lines, so that this continues up along the, 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 the coordinate axis, you get very complicated solutions. And the fact is, this is a meta theorem. So the solution of the multidimensional Riemann problem is as complicated as the general. So you see that uh, it, it's a little, well, it's not surprising if you think at the beginning that the divergence operator is a weak operator. So the solution can be fed there. So let me go on a little bit. This is another classical example. There are several many. Uh, I, in fact, I'm sorry for many people that to work on particular cases. Just uh, present something that I know <laughs> better. So, what well, has are to start, and then you get a conservation. In this case, if you a model which can be of the following form, so the, the density of cars varies because the cars move with some speed, so it depends on the density. And uh, for example, the case is that the speed is as follows. If you don't have any car, you just go as fast as you want. If you see some, an amount of the density of car, you want to go down because uh, you don't want to keep the car really small. Okay. So, but this model is not really useful to describe a situation like this one. <coughs> because uh, this is a, a detailed description of the uh, so the cars now are up to the FC. Where do you think? I don't know. Where is that? I don't know. You see the cars are moving, right? Uh, just, just one. No? <laughs> <laughs> I think he wanted to, to turn the black, but then he understood he didn't. It was the smartest. <laughs> So instead, we want to discuss a situation like this. We want to discuss a situation like this one. So you have uh, roads, and uh, well, they are much narrower and much longer than the cars. And then you have, uh, since the model is very easy to study, you can allow very complicated road measurements. Okay. So that's why what happens when you have a uh, road reduction or a traffic light, and then you have these oscillations. By the way, was a question that I always thought when I was a child, because coming back from the contest, there was this very long pool entering the city. And then you notice that when you are far away from the from the uh, line of the first uh, uh, slowing down, uh, well, basically you go, you don't have a switch, you just go slow. But as far as you, uh, as soon as you approach the puppy line, for example, the situation but this model is not exactly. So let me say that uh, the fact that you describe this, so you forget about the size of cars, is uh, natural because of the, of the rescaling of conservation law, which is the hyperbolic rescaling. So if you essentially <coughs> map, uh, well, if you go away from the system, what happens is that. Uh, and all the other quantities which are in your model of the reality today in this case, they get an assignment in front. So the typical case is the diffusion, or the typical case is the relaxation, like the operation. But we have all the other singular limits, which can be, for example, if you 
one type of numerical scheme and we can apply some numerical discovery over here. And uh, well, if you don't believe me, just, well, I just came by it from Italy. So I had my sheet and then they took down that you see the Caspian Sea and the Caspian Sea was like this. So you don't have any detailed structure of the waves. You know just the position. But if you are on the beach, you see that uh, you have a case structure of the way. Here, because the weather is acting, so the viscosity, the surface extension is acting, and then you get a, a profile, which is not this one portion of this, which will always not here. <laughs> but no matter what is the profile, once you take the plane, you get just one. You know the position, but you don't know the structure. The structure is so this is one of the, the scaling, one of the symmetries of the equation, which is important. So the, the meaning of this system is that we want to describe that, that scale dynamics. And in particular, the initial data which is invariant for this scaling is something which depends on the object. That's why the Linux problem at the beginning was important. Because it is the initial data which is invariant for and in one space dimension, invariant for the angle, we have just two angles, which is zero and high, two directions, zero and high. And so we have just a jump and the And this was, uh, I think it's called Riemann problem because exactly we didn't want to describe this 1860 that for the P system, uh, this kind of problem. And what we get is that, well, depending on these continuities, you have uh, what is called a refraction or you have what is called a shock and uh, a shock in the gear which is when a bomb is falling in the So I don't want But let me say that also the symmetries are very important in going to study, for example, large state or decay of solutions. Because uh, if you take the, the first simple nonlinearity, which is uh, the Burger's equation there, and then among many scales, you have this nice scale over here. It does in particular that you have a solution which can be taken of this form. And what you study should be M and a choice possible choice is this one. And uh, so the K, the large time behavior of perturbation is uh, like uh, the, the function which is each case like it. Okay, so the, this is just to say that symmetry is not just the order of scaling, but uh, they, they can give you what is the uh, <clears throat> but the problem so far is it, it, just very general. So I just uh, take the, the equation. So I want to study the, what I do in the linear case in order to have the coordinates, then some tricks tri tri in order to get what, what is the meaning and uh, the natural uh, initial data or uh, the important initial data. But discuss what, what is the solution, what happens. And uh, in every case, it's one of the things that we see that the solution, the distribution of solution is not real. And this is an example of, well, we for the scalar case, and uh, the meaning of this is something special. So, for example, it means that uh, if uh, a shock wave is arriving because something is slow that you expect to, the shock hits you, in this case, you hear, you hear the sound first. And then the shock arrives. Okay. Why this is, should be the correct solution? Or I don't. This situation is not clear. I, I want to enter into how to construct the solution. But the idea is that if you allow just this, you require just consultation, you can have a solution which are completely this. This was already understood by you because you could go with this guy. And uh, well, one idea to recall in English, which is in some sense the natural one, is uh, to say, well, the hyperbolic system is something that uh, I get when I just I'm flowing, I'm going away. So it the large, large scale dynamics of the, my physical system. But the physical system is inside a lot of uh, many other details. So if I under details and I do the correct limit. Uh, in this case, I put the scale, take the time to go to zero, and I prove that the limit exists, and so that one, but I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. Then the theory will be complete. Another thing is that, in general, it's a Because uh, the 
there is one problem that, uh, yes, I can fly an airplane, but if I don't know where to land her, and if I don't know what to say at this level, I believe it's very difficult to say something here, which is more complicated. Yeah, there's good effects here, but for the large time, it is always good time. You're not, you're not adding any new insight. <coughs> well, and in any case, from the point of view of the theory, you don't want to have something, you, you never like to rely on something coming from another. So you really prefer to have some things. This is a solution. If it satisfies this property, then uh, the solution is unique. Let's prove that any limit of the other system satisfies this property. This, this is the, the cleanest way to announce the, the unique. And in this case, uh, there is a clean uh, idea concept, which is the concept of N. And so the concept of N, of N is the fact that if you know that uh, there is an N Flux, okay, that, let's forget why, why it is. I just compute what is the time evolution of a function of my solution. I do the computation, so I use the chain rule under the assumption that the function is moved. I get this product here. If this product here is the derivative of a function, I substitute the derivative, and this guy now is the derivative, which means that this guy here is constant. So I have a divergence for an additional conservation law, which I can put inside the system and hope to have something more important. It turns out that if I do the same computation when I, I add one of the, my uh, high order perturbation, which is for example the scosby, still I have a, a distributional term here because it's the flash of something, so it's a distribution. Then I have something taken off control, but if uh, this quantity is a sign, this quantity, that is quantity of the same sign. So essentially, if, if the, the n is convex, what I know is that this guy here is a sign. So again, I'm using the criteria that is the limit of uh, uh, a more detailed description, but uh, uh, I pass to the limit. So if I do that, so I say that I require for any complex entropy that that balance is less or equal than zero, I discover that this guy here is uh, okay. so I'm happy to let this count. I'm discarding one bad solution, but uh, I'm not saying anything about this solution. Just discarding this thing. Turns out that in one case, which is uh, more than 45, 45 years old, you can get the solution. Because you have a lot of entries which are of the form of any constant k, q minus k. This is not a smooth function, but you can speed it. And uh, the, the idea that this is implies uniqueness is that uh, you will replace this guy, this case a bit early by, well, becoming the variables and then uh, doing something. Okay. We will replace this guy here with another solution. We discover that the difference of the solution L1 plus the divergence of the correct class is less than the zero. So in L1, but another interesting factor of entropy is that uh, well, it's not just that not if I, it, if I if I if I build a, a strange system for conservation law, you will not get. Uh, I need the computer. I need, I need that the derivative of theta times the derivative of f is a derivative. But uh, since the physical system has a, I, maybe I can ask myself to have the properties that the existence of the entity implies on the existence of an entity implies on the system. And a very nice property of the following that because if you assume that you have an entropy, you can change variables. So if you strictly convex entropy, then this, this change of variable is variable. You divide the system in the new coordinates, you do some strange computation here, which are elementary in some sense, and you obtain.
you that in the new system, the symmetric being the second derivative of function, and this characteristic is symmetric. So the system is symmetric. And what is it? Why is it so important? Because for symmetric vector volume, at the linear level, you preserve the order. At the non-linear level, you have local existence because you can show that local time, uh, the log h has, has sorry, much greater than 1. Then they do not blow up in time. Okay, so you, this, the entropy doesn't give me units, but certainly tells me that if I have a convex entropy, extended convex entropy, I'm happy about uh, local existence. But local existence is to be in time. So let me pass to then another part, the part of the theory, in which in some sense you can consider a little bit satisfied. We will you know more or less what is the structure of the solution and how more or less the proof of existence should look like. Even if, of course, you, you can always, uh, uh, we say in Italy, you can always scratch the, the bottom of the map, which means that you can always invent something by looking system for some very complete case of it. <laughs> But I think in this case, we are. Uh, so this is strictly hyperbolic in the sense that if I use my hyperbolicity, I get the again that the, the metric should be better analyzable, but I require actually that the uh, eigenvalues are bit not bit, a little bit more than the uh, to be the one. And uh, so the idea here is that if a, a system were linear, what we do we just decompose you along the eigenvector or can get on lambda, and then you get that each of uh, these components travels with the lambda. And at the linear level, you can do more or less the same for the derivative, because then you will appear at the decomposition. Okay. I don't know. But the idea is that you project the components of the derivative along the taking vectors, and uh, this guy here will proceed more or less with speed lambda r. This is a picture, for example, of the linear case. You have a, a Riemann problem, you have your R, and then, okay, you decompose the two jumps given by two vectors, eigenvectors that are one and two, and each one, one covers this space, the first jump, lambda one, and the other is this lambda So this is a linear picture. And why the theory is here is quite an absurd Because you know that well, you know a domain which is total variation of the small. <coughs> you know that then you have uniqueness, and uh, it is a difficult question of uniqueness, so let me say that there is a unique entropy solution. I don't know that it's the case, because uh, it's taken here. But uh, in any case, you can specify what is the, uh, the property that the solution must satisfy. And you know that you have a solution which satisfies both properties, and they form a Lipschitz sign. So in some sense, we know a domain in which the solution exists and is unique. Even if it's not a classical domain. But the main problem is also, I want to sketch the proof. First of all, is I will not give all the details. But it let me know that the, the following part. The hyperbolic scaling is very bad from the point of view of uh, using a theory like uh, uh, Local, uh, using local existence or local regularity theory to get local regularity. Because of the rescaling constant everything. So you know that you have a solution of some form which is regular in a ball, you rescale everything, and then it becomes regular in a ball as you want, which means you have an object. And so 